Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the KevTechify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at TCP and UDP vulnerabilities. We'll be discussing the TCP segment header, TCP services, TCP attacks, UDP segment header and operation, and finally, we'll look at UDP attacks. This episode is part of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. I'm Kevin here at KevTechify. Let's get this adventure started. Here is our TCP header. In our TCP header, we have our source and we have our destination, sequence number, acknowledgements, header length reserved. And then we have this six bits here that are our control bits. Each one of these bits represent a function for the TCP segment. The first bit here is the urge bit. It's the urgent pointer field. The second bit is the acknowledgement field. The third one is the push function. Fourth one is the reset the connection. Fifth one is to synchronize sequence numbers. And the fifth one, or sorry, sixth and final one is the finish no more data from sender fields. TCP provides three services, reliable delivery, flow control, and stateful communication. For reliable delivery, TCP incorporates acknowledgements to guarantee delivery. Now, if a timely acknowledgement is not received, the sender retransmits that data. Requiring acknowledgements of the received data can cause substantial delays because if we have to resend that data over and over, it's going to slow down that data from arriving. Now, examples of application layers that use TCP reliability is our HTTP, our secure sockets, FTP, DNS information, those all use reliable delivery mechanisms. Second service is flow control. TCP implements flow control to acknowledge one segment at a time. Multiple segments can be acknowledged with a single acknowledgement segment. We want to acknowledge what pieces are delivered. We want to control and say only so many pieces are of information are available for delivery are being sent out. And until we get an acknowledgement, we're not going to send any more. And so we control the number of segments that are out also. And finally, we have stateful communication is between two parties that require a three way handshake to make sure we get data delivered. There are three steps in a TCP connection process. It's between two computers. Typically these two computers, one is the client, one is the server. The client sends out the synchronization, synchronization request and it, it's requesting to establish client to server communications. That request is sent to the server. That server receives that synchronization, synchronization request in. Then the server sends out its own synchronized synchronization request. And instead of requesting a client to server, they're going to request a server to client communications. And so the first step was client to server. Second one is going back the opposite direction. What we're doing is requesting communication in both directions. Also, when the server sends out that synchronization request, it's also going to send out an acknowledgement of that request from the client. So it's going to acknowledge that first synchronization request. After the server sends out the synchronization and acknowledgement, the client receives both that synchronization and acknowledgement in. It's, it's going to receive the acknowledgement for the re synchronization request it sent out. It's also going to receive that synchronization request in. When it receives that synchronization request in, it will establish that connection. And then finally, the client will send out that acknowledgement saying, we have established two-way communications between our devices. In a TCP attack, the threat actor sends out multiple synchronization requests. 
That's that first stage to get the communication to happen one way. It sends out the synchronization request to a server. Here we're sending it out to a web server. That web server gets in the synchronization request and it sends its own synchronization request from the web server back to the threat actor. It also sends the acknowledgement for that first synchronization request from the bad actor. But here's the here's the problem. That threat actor never re, never sends that final acknowledgement of that established connection. And so that web server waits for the completion of that three-way handshake. And it'll sit there and it'll wait for that completion. But in the meantime, a valid user, a legitimate user, actually sends a synchronization request to open up communications with that web server and that web server is unavailable because they are waiting for that completion of the three-way handshake from the threat actor. Now, the threat actor doesn't send out just one synchronization request. They send out hundreds and thousands of synchronization requests to the web server, enough to fill up its buffer and have it sit there and wait for the completion of those three-way handshakes. If you like this episode on TCP and UDP vulnerabilities and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this helps support the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website, devtechify.com, for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. To terminate a TCP session, it's a four-way exchange process. Our client, PCA, sends a finish request to the server, or PCB. The server receives that finish request in and then sends an acknowledgement back to that original PC. So they terminate communication in one direction. After PCB sends that acknowledgement out, they also send a finish request out to terminate the communication going from B to A. So they send out the finish request. That finish request is received by PCA. PCA then sends the acknowledgement back to PCB, terminating that two-way communication of that PC or TCP connection. TCP session hijacking is a difficult attack to pull off. The skill set, the tools needed for this is, is at a higher level. This would be something for your more advanced threat actor to attempt. What they do is they take over an already authenticated host, meaning there's, there's a client server communication that's happening there. The threat actor comes and pretends to be that client and takes over the communication that's happening between those two. Instead of going between the client and the server, it's now going between the threat actor and the server. And it, it takes over that already authenticated, that legitimate communication. Now, there's a couple things the threat actor do must do. It has to spoof the IP address of, of the one host. So the... Um, client they're trying to take over at the end of that communication, they have to spoof that IP address. So they have to get the right IP address. Then they have to predict the next sequence number. You can do that by tools like Wireshark, where you're listening to the traffic going across your network and you can see the sequence numbers and you can look at that and you can predict that one. And then once you do that, you can send an acknowledgement to the other host. And if everything works, you have successfully hijack that session. Now, once you've done that, once you've established that connection, you can send, but you can't receive data. You can send data because remember TCP communication happens in one A from PCA to PCB, but it also happens from PCB to PCA. And so what you've done is taken over one of those connections. And so you can send but then you haven't taken over the connection where you receive. So you can only send when you complete a successful TCP session hijacking. 
UDP user data gram packets, they're typically used in DNS, TFTP, NFS, simple network management protocols. They're usually used in real time protocols like media streaming or voice over IP. UDP is connectional. So we don't have to establish those connections like we did with TCP. The transport layer protocol, it has a much lower overhead. Notice our UDP header here. There's not all the lines and fields we had. UDP is not connection orientated. It doesn't offer sophisticated retransmission, sequencing, and flow control mechanisms that TCP does. Those reliability functions aren't provided here by UDP. They have to be provided elsewhere if required. The low overhead of UDP makes it very desirable for protocols that make simple request and reply transactions. UDP is not protected by any type of encryption. You can add encryption, but it's not available by default. Most commonly, we see UDP flood attacks, where we send a lot of UDP information at a target. We overflow them with vast amounts of information, so much so that legitimate traffic can't get through. Now, there's a couple of tools out there. UDP, UDP Unicorn, Low Orbit Ion Cannon. These are two tools that do UDP flood attacks. They send a flood of UDP packets. They sweep through all the known ports. And what they do is find the closed ports. They target those ports. They target to reply with ICMP unreachable messages. It uses almost all the bandwidth this attack, and it's very similar to a denial of service attack. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on TCP and UDP vulnerabilities. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.